And folks, Christmas is a wonderful time of the year. I truly believe more people are tuned in to spiritual things and actually the birth of Jesus Christ, uh, especially during the Christmas season. And uh, if you have a bulletin and want to follow along with us, let me give you the three points I want to share with you today. Number one, the spirit of sharing. Christmas is the spirit of sharing. Number two, the, Christmas is the spirit of humility. Uh, Mary was humble. Uh, we will see that today. And number three, the spirit of servanthood. The spirit of servanthood. Christmas is all three of these things that we will find in Scripture. You know, equal with Easter Sunday, I believe Christmas is an extremely important holiday that we should celebrate with much enthusiasm. Jesus' birth tru truly changed history and eternity as we know it. This week I have already heard of people saying they cannot get into the Christmas spirit and they were not ready for Christmas. My question is, as a Christian, how can you not be excited about celebrating the birth of Jesus? And I understand the weather. I mean, it seems like it's, uh, you know, you know, September or October, uh, but it is the Christmas season. My thought is we should be excited to share with the world the true meaning of Christmas. And folks, here it is. Jesus is the reason for the Christmas season. Gifts and lights and food and fellowship and decorations are all fine, but the true uh, Christmas spirit is about Christian love and letting the world know who Jesus is. We truly need to have a spirit of Christmas in our hearts and in our words. Uh, when I think of the Christmas spirit, I think of the fruits of the spirit. If you look in Galatians 5, verse 22, just one verse, these are fruits, uh, fruit of the spirit. I think of fruit cake. <laughs> You know, there's, you know, ingredients in fruitcake. And by the way, while we're here, folks, don't give me candy. Don't give me cookies. Don't send me pies. All right? I'm just going to have to pass them along. All right? I'm not being mean or rude. Every year uh, there's things, but I'm taking my diet seriously. I only need two more pounds to hit my goal, and now is not a good time. All right? So give them to friends. All right, and give them to other folks, and I would greatly appreciate that. But let's look at the fruit of the Spirit. Christmas is love. Christmas is joy. I notice two, two songs we sing even today. Folks, it should be a joyful time in your life. It shouldn't be a drudgery. It shouldn't be, I've got to do this, or I have to do this. Christmas is a time of love and joy and peace, peace on earth and goodwill to men. Patience. We need patience. There are a lot of impatient people shopping during this time. We need kindness. We need goodness. We need faithfulness. We need gentleness. And we need self-control. Christmas is all of these things. Now, in our text, in Luke, turn with me to Luke chapter 1. Luke 1. I want to share with you Mary's view of what is going on in her life. And earlier in chapter 1, you will see the announcements of John's uh, birth to Zacharias and to Elizabeth. Uh, we know they are talking about John the Baptist. Uh, they could not have, Elizabeth could not have children, and she prayed to God that she would have children. And uh, uh, God heard their prayers. And, and uh, even in, if you'll read chapter 1, the early part of that, in their older age. They were older, and uh, it certainly was a gift from God. And then what happened was uh, Mary had found out, okay, that Elizabeth was pregnant, and then she found out at the very same time, the second part there in Luke uh, chapter 1, her own uh, expectancy. She was visited by the angel, and the angel told her, uh, that she was going to have a son, uh, and that son is baby Jesus. And when she found that out, 
she decided to go visit Elizabeth. And they were related. They were cousins. So uh, we can see in Luke 1, verse 39, the spirit of sharing. Now Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste to the city of Judah. Why was she excited? One is Elizabeth, she found out, was pregnant and was going to have their first child. Why was she excited? She just had an appearance of an angel. And I'm sure she told her story, it began with, you're not going to believe this. Can you imagine an angel appearing to you? I mean, that, that would, I, I mean, it would floor us all. It, we would just, I don't want to use the word shocked, but we would be really, really surprised. And she had the best news, folks, I am telling you, that a woman could get. Not only are you pregnant, but you are carrying the Christ child. Ladies, can you imagine that? And you think of Mary's background, folks. She was young. Uh, there was an indication she was in her late teens. Okay, They were not rich. They were, her and Joseph both was poor. But yet, having this news, that's why she said, made haste and entered into the house of Zacharias and greeted Elizabeth. And by the way, that's about a 60-mile journey. Okay, Back in those days, most people walked. Okay, So it would take more than a day uh, to get there. And it happened when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary that the baby leaped in her womb. She was carrying John the Baptist. And of course, folks, we know that John the Baptist was a forerunner of Jesus Christ. He was the one preparing the way of the Lord. He was the one that was preaching in the wilderness. He was going to be the one uh, even uh, akin to Jesus himself. And the reason I believe John the Baptist leaped because the presence of God was in that place. Folks, I'm telling you, conception, all right? Life begins at conception. We believe that with all of our heart. And the Bible says the same thing about Jeremiah. From his conception, he was to be a prophet of God. And from Jesus' conception, he was the Son of God, the sacrificial lamb. And I'm telling you, that Holy Spirit uh, caused uh, John to leap in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. She knew that the presence of God, when Mary came into the house, she knew she was in the presence of God. And folks, I am telling you, and I say it often, the most important thing here today is the Holy Spirit. It is the Spirit of God. It is the Christmas spirit. Folks, we need to get into the Christian spirit. We need to understand that we have, I mean, today's the fifth. We only have 20 days left to get into the Christmas spirit and to let everyone know the importance of Jesus' birth. And then the Bible says in verse 42, then, then she spoke aloud, with a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Notice she didn't just whisper it. She was excited. She was excited for her cousin Mary. She was excited to sense the presence of God. It brought joy to her life. Folks, joy to the world. We sang it. The Lord has come. Christmas should be a time of joy, not dread, not negativism. And it says, but why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord shall come to me? You can see humility on her part. In a minute, you'll see humility on the part of Mary. So part of Christmas is humbling ourselves. And we'll speak about that in just a second. Verse 44, for indeed, as soon as the voice of your greeting sounded in my ears, the baby leaped in my womb for joy. We leap for joy in other things. If you watch folks on TV at sporting events, 
What do they do when they do something good? When they score a touchdown or shoot a shot uh, to end the game and win, what do they do? They leap for joy. Folks, we should have that kind of excitement about the Christmas season. And verse 45 says, Blessed is she who believed, for there will be a fulfillment of those things which were told to her by our Lord. Folks, I am telling you, 700 years earlier, God, through the prophet Isaiah, shared the good news of the birth of Christ. Hold your finger there and go with me to Isaiah. Go to Isaiah chapter 7. Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. And behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and, call, and shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. Folks, I am telling you, God is with us. Jesus is with us. The Holy Spirit is with us. And the spirit of Christmas needs to be seen in our lives. Turn the page and go to chapter 9, verse 6. The prophecy, the prophecy of what was about to take place in Mary's life, having the birth of the Christ child. Verse 6, Isaiah 9, 6, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. The government will be upon his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Yes, Jesus, uh, Joshua, God with us. All those things are true. But folks, part of that joy and that celebration that Jesus is, the Christmas season is wonderful. Jesus is the Mighty Counselor. Jesus is God incarnate. Jesus is the everlasting Father. And you can have Prince, peace on earth, goodwill to men, if you know Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. And it says, and of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Folks, his kingdom is forever. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to order it and to establish it with judgment and justice. From that time forward, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Folks, you can see in the Bible that phrase, the zeal of the Lord. We get happy over lots of things. We get excited over births. I'm telling you, we saw two twins even this morning, I saw as, as they were coming in, everybody would stop and they would look at the twins. And folks, we need that kind of zeal also over the birth of Jesus Christ. So we see Mary and Elizabeth sharing uh, their joy with one another and being excited over the birth of Jesus. The second thing I want you to see is the spirit of humility and we will be looking in verse 46 and here Mary breaks out into a song of praise uh, it is called the Magnificent and it is two verses and this is uh, Mary singing to her Savior singing to God and just thanking God for all that she has and that she is carrying the Christ child. Look at verse 46. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord. Folks, I'm telling you, we need to magnify the Lord in our daily lives. We need to let everybody know that Jesus is the reason for the season. I love all that's going on. I put up the lights and we have decorations and Lori decorates the in inside. But if you look in my yard, the most important thing in my yard on the right side of my driveway is a manger scene. That is the place, and that is the reminder of Jesus' birth. 
and Jesus' birth, and we need to have that in our life. We need to, you know, wear the buttons. Jesus is the reason for the season. He is the gift. He is the greatest gift ever given to mankind, folks. And it says, my soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior. There's that word again, joy. Joy, twice we've already seen joy. Rejoiced is the same word here. It should be a happy time. It should be an exciting time. It should be a fun time. It should be a time when we reflect on what God has done for us. For he has regarded the lowly state of his maid servant. And you know what she's saying? In, in other scriptures it says, why me? Why did God choose me? It wasn't because of her education. It wasn't because her parents had money. It wasn't because she lived in a nice house. Jesus was born in a stable, folks. It shows humility in Mary's life. Humility in her life. Hold your finger there and go to James chapter 4, verse 6. James 4, we're speaking of humility. James 4. Verse 6, the Bible says, But he gives more grace, therefore he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Folks, Christmas time should be a time of grace in our lives. Forgetting what has gone on in the past and humbling ourselves and, and being nice and being kind and you know, not holding things against one another. Another scripture uh, found here is 1 Peter 5. Just go to the next scripture, 1 Peter 5. 1 Peter 5, verse 5, it speaks of humility. Likewise, younger people, submit yourself to your elders. Yes, all of you, be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility. Folks, I am telling you, God loves the humble person in the time of christmas is a time we christians should humble ourselves before god we should think of others first and it says god resists the proud but gives grace to the humble therefore humble yourselves under the mighty hand of god that he may exalt you in due time folks god loves the humble. God blesses the humble. God blesses those who put others first. And I am telling you, Christmas is a time that we can do that in our own lives. One more scripture, Philippians 2. Philippians 2. Philippians 2, verse 1. Therefore, if there's any consolation in Christ, if there are any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy. Folks, Christmas should be a time of love. Showing our love for Christ. Showing our love for others. And infection, all right? Just greeting one another and having that smile on our face. And showing mercy, affection and mercy. Fulfill my joy and be like-minded. Folks, I'm telling you, one of the most joyful occasions known to mankind is when there is a birth. A birth. You have two sides of the family just waiting for that child to be born. And, and uh, you know, many times you know, you know the, the sex of that child child but they're still the ones that they they don't know and the expectation and folks here's the deal folks when you come to that place all you want is that child to be okay and when you hear that news everything's okay i am telling you joy breaks out in your heart and in your mind and folks that same thing needs to be happened over jesus's birth Folks, I am telling you, there should be joy and we should be like-minded. Having the same love 
being of one accord in one mind. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind. Lowliness is not, it's, it's not just not thinking of yourself. I understand you have needs and your needs need to be met, but those needs go behind what we have and what we want, and we put the needs of others in front of that. Let each of you esteem others better than himself. And here's verse 4. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but for the interests of others. You know what joy means? And I know I've told you this before, but joy means Jesus first, others second, and yourself last. And folks, I don't know any greater example of humility than Jesus Christ himself. Look at verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God did not consider it to be robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of man. Folks, that's what Jesus did. His birth. And think about this. He left heaven. He is the only one that had been to heaven first before he was physically born on earth to Mary. He left everything, a perfect environment, okay, with God, his heavenly Father. No sin, no sorrow, no pain. In his birth, in his birth, he came down to become like you and I. And folks, we know why he had done that, all right? And, and from the cradle, folks, to the cross, he always had other people in mind. And that's the way we need to have. We need that same humility during Christmas. There are people that are hurting. There are people that, that you know, just sometimes you can just see on their face that they are hurting. And we need to take our time. We don't need to pass them by. Sometimes, folks, it's just a prayer. I love to stop and ask people, can I pray for you? And I am telling you, I have never been turned down. If, you, if, somebody, if I ask somebody, can I pray for you, even someone that doesn't know Christ, they'll make a statement like, like this, I'll take anyone's prayer. And folks, that is what Christmas is about. It's about Jesus humbling himself. And look at verse 8. And being found in the appearance as a man, he humbled himself, became obedient to the point of death, even the death on the cross. Oh, folks, Jesus showed the epitome of humility. He could have come down off that cross. He could have said, no, I'm not going to do this. But he humbled himself, and he died for you and I. Folks, we need to follow Jesus' example. So we see the spirit of sharing and the spirit of humility, and let's see the spirit of servanthood back in our text. Back in our text. I'll keep reading verse 2. 48, he has regarded the lowly state of his maidservant. For behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed. This is Mary's song. This is Mary singing praises. And folks, when she says blessed, another word is highly favored. People ask me how I'm doing. A lot of times I like to say I'm blessed and I'm highly favored. I'm blessed, I'm beloved, and I'm highly favored. It's not meaning I'm a special, you know, God's special child. It's simply saying, folks, there are so many people that cannot celebrate Christmas like we celebrate Christmas. And we should be humble. We should realize we are blessed. If somebody asks you, how are you doing? Oh, I got a headache or, I, you know, my back is killing me. Oh, you don't want to know. I'm serious, and the truth is, I really don't, all right? Okay? 
not that I don't care, but what you are saying is this is more important. And folks, don't we tend to say the negative things and remember the negative things more than we do the positive things? I'll tell you right now, and, and it, it always stayed with me in the last three or four months, or even longer than that, in the last year, Stan Rowe, when I asked him how he was doing, he says, I'm blessed. And folks, I knew he wasn't feeling good. I knew he was struggling. But he would literally say, I'm blessed. Folks, we are blessed. We are blessed. Verse 49, and he who is mighty has done great things for me. And holy is his name. Can you see Mary just praising God? just crying out to God and loving God and worshiping God and thanking God. Then verse 50 is the second verse of this praise hymn. And his mercy is on them who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of the heart. He has put down the mighty from their thrones and he has exalted the lowly. I'm telling you, Mary was sharing the news with Elizabeth, and Mary showed humility in her personal life. Then the last thing I want to share with you, not only the spirit of sharing and of humility, but the spirit of servanthood. Servanthood. Look at verse 53. He has filled the hungry with good things. Oh, folks, I am telling you, there are hungry people out there, okay? I am so thankful for our food closet. Folks, we're, we're open year-round, and we help people every week. I am telling you, during that Christmas season, I thank God for the Salvation Army, and I thank God for all these folks that feed the hungry. And the rich, he has sent away empty. And even at that, folks, uh, you know, there's, and there's nothing wrong with having money, but we need to share that wealth with others, and we need to give to others and, and the less fortunate. Verse 54, he has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy as he has spoke to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his seed. What is he talking about here, folks? He's talking about the seed of David. He is talking about salvation. He is talking about Jesus Christ. The greatest gift we could give somebody at the Christmas season is the gift of eternal life. We need to think about that in the Christmas season. Sometimes we're so busy with so many other things that are going on that we don't stop to think that does this person know Jesus Christ as their Savior and Lord? And that, that servanthood spirit is, is what is so important. It is so important in our lives. In verse 56, And Mary remained with her about three months and returned to her house. And the three months was so Elizabeth could give birth. And then she went back home uh, to her place. John chapter 13. Go with me if you would. John chapter 13, and again, this is Jesus showing his servanthood. John chapter 13, and we know the chapter in the scripture here earlier that Jesus was about to die. He was in his last uh, time, in his, you know, in his last uh, time here on earth, and he, he had a lesson that he really wanted his disciples to learn. Matter of fact, when it first started, they could not figure out what Jesus was doing. Because when, he, when the disciples came in, Jesus had a towel wrapped around him. And he, was, he told them to sit down, and I want to wash your feet. And folks, at that time, in that culture, feet washing was the lowliest job of a servant. Okay, That was, that was the lowliest job of a servant. And Jesus, I, I know it threw him off. Because if you remember what Peter said, Peter's always sticking his foot in his mouth. All right? And he said, hey, if you're going to wash my feet, won't you wash every bit of me? Okay? And 
And Jesus basically told Peter, Peter, you don't get it. You really don't get it. All right? Folks, this was not about Peter. And folks, Christmas is not about us. It's not about us. It's about Jesus. It's about his life. It's about serving others. Look in verse 12, if you would. So when he had washed their feet and taken his garments and sat down again, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you say, Well, for I am. Folks, Jesus didn't have to do that. He did not have to do that. All right? He was the Son of God. But he did it as an example for others to follow. Verse 14, If then your Lord and teacher have washed your feet, you, ought, you also ought to wash one another's feet. And again, folks, I'm not asking you to literally do that when people come into your house. Now, for some reason you want to do that, that's, that's between you and them. But he's simply saying we need to put others before ourselves. We need to put other needs before ourselves. I've already been asked twice, twice, Mike, what, you, what do you want for Christmas? Folks, I'm telling you, it, it's just I, I, I don't have anything that, I mean, want is one thing, but we need is another. Folks, I am blessed. I really don't need anything. And, and what happens when you get to that place in your life, you are ready to serve others. And my family's going to buy me gifts. I understand all that. But if you just ask me, what do you need? I don't need anything. God has met all my needs according to his riches and glory. And he's simply saying, take care of others. Okay? I'm going to be gone. Jesus was saying to his disciples, I'm not going to be here. Look after one another. Help the people. Think of Jesus' life. What was Jesus' whole life? It was helping others. Pick out a family that you can help and you will be like Jesus. Verse 15, for I've given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Folks, Jesus was the ultimate example of humility and servanthood. He was the example of who we should emulate. Verse 16, most assuredly I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is he who sent greater than he who has sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do, do, do them. And the last scripture I'd like to share with you is uh, Matthew 20. Matthew chapter 20. Matthew 20. Matthew 20. And again, we won't start in verse 20, but, you know, uh, James and John's mother asked to, asked Jesus, and he just said, hey, would you do me a favor? Would you do me a favor? And he, he said, what? And she basically said, would you grant my two kids to sit, one on the left and one on the right? And Jesus told her, basically, hey, you don't know what you're asking, okay? I understand you're a mother, and I understand these are my disciples, all right? But that's, that's not for you to decide or even ask, really. And matter of fact, the other disciples in another gospel, basically, they were kind of thinking, you know, well, who is she? Why are they so special? Okay? And then I want to pick up in verse 24. And when the ten heard it, they were greatly displeased with the two brothers. Now, again, I don't know if they thought, well, they might have put her, the mom, her, their mom up to it. I don't know why they were so displeased, but again, it's, it's a sign of being favored, being favored. But Verse 25, but Jesus called to them himself and said, you know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord, o, lord, Gentiles lord it over them, and those who are great exercise authority over them. Folks, I don't care how high you get up, and I understand the chain of command, I really do, but folks, it doesn't matter whether you're at the top of the chain or the bottom of the chain. According to God, we are all equal in God's sight. We are all equal. 
Verse 26, yet it shall not be so among you, but whoever desires to become great among you, let him be your servant. Folks, that's not what the world says. The world says you work your way up to the top, you get to the top, then you can call the shots, and then you can decide everything. And folks, there's no, nothing wrong with being promoted, nothing wrong with being in charge. But folks, we need to remember where we came from. I think of my own life. I lived at 2721I in Lawton, Oklahoma, and it was called South of the Tracks. It's exactly opposite of here, okay? And we lived in a small house. My father worked hard at what he did, and I remember times, even at Christmas times, when we were younger, all right, my grandparents, we got an orange, an apple, and we got nuts in our stocking. All right, I remember the, you know, the humility and the, not humility, but the humbleness of our home and everything. And folks, I'm telling you, life was so much simpler then than it is now. We, because of, you know, uh, society has influenced us, you know, that we have to have this power and we have to have all these things in our lives that make us happy. But folks, I am telling you, I am right now the happiest I've ever been in my life because I am doing what God has called me to do, what he has destined me to do. And folks, we all need to remember where we came from and we need to help those uh, who have less. Verse 27, and whoever desires to be first among you, let him be your slave, just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and give his life a ransom for many. Folks, if Jesus served others, we need to serve others also. Why did he come? Folks, he came to die for you and I. So what is Christmas about? Christ. The word Christ is in Christmas. And Christ needs to be first in everything we do during the Christmas season. The greatest gift you can give someone else is the gift of salvation. And could I suggest this as we close? You could go to the angel tree and get a, get a, a family there. You could... Find other ways to serve. You could uh, volunteer at the Gospel Rescue Mission. You could look at some shut-ins or maybe even elderly folks in your community or in your neighborhood and take them goodies. Let them know. These people that live alone, these people that are single, those people uh, don't have a lot of folks around them. And I'm just telling you, it makes such a difference in their lives and encourage them in their lives. And the last thing, which I've already said, folks, share the gospel. God's going to give you opportunity during Christmas to share the gospel with someone. Give them the greatest gift ever known by mankind. And folks, that is the gift of salvation. Father, thank you. Thank you for the Christmas spirit. And God, thank you for the fruits of the spirit. God, I pray that we even as a church would memorize those fruits. And God, I pray that we would just work it in our own lives, God, every one of them. And God, I pray, Lord, that we would just look around this week and see the less fortunate and see who we can help. God, I know there's people in our neighborhoods and in, in, in schools and just around that we can help. And God, I pray that the spirit of Christmas would just well up in us this week. And God, when people ask us, why? Why are you so happy? Why? Why are you doing this for me? That we would tell them because of what Jesus has done for us. Because Jesus has given us the greatest gift. God, I pray that everyone here, everyone here, would walk from this place with the Christmas spirit. God, just uh, your Holy Spirit just would well up in us 
And God, we would see things differently this week. God, give us those divine appointments. Help us to reach out to others. Help us to be an encouragement to others around us. And God, we'll be careful to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. God, if there's one person here that doesn't know you, God, I pray today would be their day of salvation. It would be the greatest Christmas they ever had. And God, I pray that the Holy Spirit would speak to them during this invitation. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Would you stand to your feet? If God has spoken to you in any way, would you come?